another episode of what we've been watching. I have today with me Crystal, Noel, and of course myself. Say say hi. Hello. Hello. All right. So in this, we just talk about things we've been watching. We'll give you two or three movies, however many we feel like, and talk about them. And that's about all there is for this one. It's just kind of a little update on cool things. Who wants to start? Uh, I can go first. Um... If you don't mind, uh, I recently saw on opening night. So let me just tell you how great Movie Pass is. <laughs> First of all, it is the best, uh, especially in Los Angeles because most of our theaters play indie films anyway. And the theaters that are part of the Movie Pass program are also indie theaters, uh, which is great because then I can see some some great foreign films and indie films and this this particular movie was uh, had been buzzing in Sundance and the Toronto Film Festival for a little bit and uh, it's a it's a French rape <coughs> revenge film sorry oh no worries um, it's a French rape revenge film called Revenge uh, <laughs> it's uh, directed by Coralie Fargo I believe is her name uh, and it's the reason why it's interesting well First of all, I had heard that it belonged in the same echelon as the French extremity films. I don't agree with that. Uh, it is a very well-made film. Uh, it is also unique in that it's a rape-revenge film from the female perspective, which you know can only have some you know more commentary on entitlement and commentary on uh, commentary on the male gaze in media in general. Uh, the violence is extreme, but not in an French extremity kind of way. It's much more exploitative. It's much more kind of situation. Uh, the gore is pretty pretty great. Um, some of the action scenes are great. Uh, overall, it's an incredibly competent film. And, you know, I'm happy it, it's it, that it was made and I'm happy that I got to see it. I wouldn't put it up there with those other movies, but I would highly recommend, you know, everybody who's a horror fan to check it out. And, you know, maybe, maybe you'll love it too, because I know some of my favorite reviewers, such as uh, uh, Scott Tobias, Mm -hmm. Absolutely loves this movie. So Scott Tobias from from well, he's Pitchfork, he AV Plug, uh, AV Club. Um, now he's part of, I guess, still AV Club. He's awesome. Um, I mean, kind of, you know, <clears throat> people say that uh, there's no male gaze. In it, I think she's commenting on the male gaze because it is pretty male gazy, mm. especially the. I could tell you a little bit of the setup. So it's a, uh, like a, kind of like a super successful guy. I don't know what he does for business, but he's helicoptering into some foreign uh, savanna with his girlfriend, who's kind of like a, you know, this like sexy dumb blonde right and they land and he's going out there to basically uh have an affair with this woman because he has a family at home oh god and it's just like super like beautiful private house and then his two friends show up and they're they were planning on uh a hunting trip in the savannah that's what they do every year apparently and they get a large game or something but they came a little bit too early and they all started getting, they're very infatuated with this woman. And one of them crosses a line and she's raped. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the way that they go about it, there's a lot of uh, entitlement and there's a lot of victim blaming. And the way she gets revenge is pretty great. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it might happen. Um, what, was, and I, um, the, <clears throat> what was that movie, 
No one wanted, oh, I spit on your grave, where she did the role reversal of, oh, you wanted it, like, kind of thing. Yeah. Well, this one's kind of in a similar vein where there's three gentlemen, three gentlemen, three dudes where, and she's, she has to go one to the other, the other, one to the other, and you get to see this play out. But it's uh, brutally violent, not in the same way as I spit on your grave. So if you're a little bit queasy watching that, but you can watch stuff like Grindhouse movies, this is no problem. Uh, it's it, it has a lot more fun with it with the uh, the subject material the subject matter, uh, and <clears throat> so one thing that I will know that I noticed that was a little bit off putting to me the acting was fine, but the guy who plays the rapist was clearly and by far the best actor, which made me very uncomfortable because I enjoyed his performance so oh, much. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> oh, I liked when you raped that girl. No, oh, like wow. his character was the most like human and the most, I, I don't know, it was really interesting. The way Do you that think that was on out. purpose by the filmmaker? It could have been. It could have been a uh, commentary on that too because he's not just some faceless like sex monster he's like a person mm, that interesting you know and uh but yeah I, I like movies that change your sp perspective on things and you know this is definitely one of them so check it out hmm. yeah. okay um Noel, you want to go well it's interesting you say that because basically what i was going to do was Go through this list, and but I'll say that I saw a rape revenge movie that's getting a lot less play. It's from last year called MFA, Master of Fine Arts, but it's just called MFA. And let me just read the IMDb thing. Um, an art student taps into a rich source of creative inspiration after the accidental slaughter of her rapist. An unlikely vigilante emerges, uh, set out to avenge college girls whose attackers walked free. So... I would say that the first half of this is really great because it deals with her art and her going to class and her friendship with a girl that lives in her apartment complex. And um, so it had really um, promising beginnings and it's really well filmed <clears throat> and it is written and directed by a woman or by two women, just like Revenge. So it'd be interesting to compare and contrast. I haven't been able to see Revenge yet. Um, the, and the rape is, feels very realistic to me, um, uh, because it's super fast and the guy thinks that she, the guy imposes a certain kind of sex on her and just like you said, as makes the assumption, or he doesn't even have to ask that this is the kind of sex she likes. And that felt very realistic to me because then it's a, a blurrier line, right? Well, she went over for sex, but she didn't know the sex was going to be really nasty and violent, but fast, you know what I mean? So she's not like lying bloody and bleeding the way that, you know, in I Spit on Your Grave, she's obviously been seriously, seriously brutalized. So it's interesting that way. And then the problem is, is that for me, when it turned into a, re when the revenge part started, it turned into an ordinary average every day, if you can call that, that uh, revenge film that I thought it was gonna do something different, or I thought it might do something different. and even though it shows her art change from before to after, I didn't think it changed enough or I didn't think it had enough to do with what eventually happens. Like the art stuff is left out of it and I don't think it should have been. Like there might've been an interesting way to include, to make, or does she make the revenges artistic? Maybe she does and I just don't remember because it didn't make an, the art she does before and after are both not very good. So that's part of the <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's pretty good. I would recommend it as a rape revenge film. It's a little bit different. She's good. It is definitely a female perspective. Like I said, the rape felt very real. And I could imagine it being in that situation, um, anybody could be a uh, quote unquote victim of somebody imposing a certain kind of sex on you without asking, you know what I mean? And it's, again, the line is quite blurry in a situation like that. Well, yeah, just but, because you're there to have sex doesn't mean you're there for bondage or exactly. whatever, yeah. Yeah, that spanking is fine if you ask first, but it gets, yeah. you know, it's, it's a very complicated thing, but this is clearly a rape. And like I said, that's when it gets kind of ordinary. 
Um, but there's relate there's a relationship between her and this other young woman who lives in her complex um, that is very interesting. And basically, somebody took me to see Annabelle Creation. They said, "Do you want to go to the movies?" And I was like, "Yeah, whatever," because I don't get out enough. And I would never seek out Annabelle Creation. I don't like those movies. What is what is that series that it comes from? Conjuring. Conjuring. I don't like those Conjuring films for a variety of reasons. We could talk about later, but. And I, dolls just not scary at all. I mean, there's been a couple of terrifying doll things, but this, the only thing scary about Annabelle is she needs a makeover. I mean, <laughs> the application of makeup on Annabelle is what is so scary about Annabelle. It's yeah. like, overdid it's, it's it. It's funny in that movie, because you see that guy's other dolls, and they're totally they're like, so normal, <laughs> cute dolls. And then you've got this really weird one out of nowhere. Oh, this Monica. Woman. Well, we lost you for a second. We got you back. Oh. Um, yeah, Annabelle's not scary at all. But what interested me, I actually enjoyed it because it was all women. It's mm -hmm. all women mm -hmm. of different ages. Did you have you guys seen it? Yeah, I just watched <laughs> it recently yeah. too. You know, it's you get a whole range of womanhood. There's one man, and he's played by somebody I really like. Um, oh, I, what's I, his? I knew who it was, but now I can't think. Uh, I yeah, let me see. Anthony LaPaglia plays one man and I love him so it was good so it says Annabelle creation last year 2000 I'm sorry 12 years after the tragic death of their little girl a doll maker and his wife welcome a nun and several girls from a shuttered orphanage into their home where they soon become the target of the doll makers possessed creation Annabelle so again Annabelle I'm sorry is not scary at all um, what was interesting was all these girls and and it seemed like the actors were the age of the characters They were real young women and after a while you guys are gonna hate this but like, you know the, the 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 story starts to get really blurry and weird and it starts to it starts to lose track of itself And I was like this is kind of picnic at hanging Rocky. It's all these young women they're kind of drifting, they kind of drift around the house in a certain way. And it's very much about female- Like ghost vision? What's ghost vision? Monica knows. <laughs> no, they're real people. No, and it's quite, it's actually visually really good. And it's like the 30s or something. And I love the fact that the nun is young and pretty. Yeah, like, she's, it's she's not sweet one of the- too. She's not like she's an sweet. evil, mean nun. It's like, thank God, not all nuns are vicious, horrible, you know, repressed. She's, re yeah, everybody in a way is good. There's nobody bad. And even Annabelle, yeah, she's just not scary or bad. But um, it's about female friendship. And it's about the relationships between young women and sort of how women work together. And that's what MFA is about. And I think that's, it's what a lot of these, um, these films I've seen lately have been about. Uh, so I watched Jennifer's Body, which is so funny. <laughs> have you guys seen it? It's been a long time it? since I've seen that one. Oh. I, uh, let me just, I'll go really fast. Um, that's a, a female director and writer. A newly possessed high school cheerleader turns into a succubus who specializes in killing her male classmates. Can her best friend put an end to the horror? Well, <laughs> The film is a ridiculous mess. It's from 2009, and it was, I think it was, a, it was Karen Kusama's second film, maybe, and it was a big yeah. disaster, and there was concerns about her career, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people, I've heard that people are starting to reevaluate it. I was laughing out loud through the whole thing. I thought it was so funny, some of the writing, and the performances are good, and it's a mess, though. It's like what this whole succubus thing totally doesn't work. And it's like um, it's a as a horror film, it's it's all over the place. The rules are unclear. And but the real revelation for me was and Megan Fox isn't really given. She's not she can't do anything but play high camp as a succubus. And she's already, you know, so voluptuous and tall and hardly yeah. looks Amanda like a high school student. Girl. But girl, Amanda yes. Seyfried yeah. just ruined my world. I had no yeah. idea Amanda Seyfried was so talented. And she totally, I totally bought her as a high school student. I totally bought her as, um, her, you know, the, the second best friend. But what this movie, and there's a wonderful sex scene that is so adorable. Um, uh, you know, I'm really into sex scenes and how they're filmed. And <laughs> I think that. I think and we're if all they're, really into sex. Well, I hate sex scenes that don't add to the story, but this sex scene is super important. And it reminds me, like, if the sex scene in 
it follows is like teenagers at their most kind of desperate and like it's humorless and it's no fun. It's just, they really want to do it. This is like all the humor and all the fun is brought back into it. But what it turns out is there's a whole sexual relationship or a whole sexual undercurrent to the relationship between Amanda Seyfried's character and Megan Fox's character, Jennifer, their best friends before, during and after she turns into a succubus. And it's really about when female friendship and how sexual desires can get in the way or redefine a female friendship. Cause both, cause Megan Fox's thing is like, she becomes a succubus is essentially what Monica's it's pretty much a metaphor for voracious female sexuality. Right. Mm -hmm. What does she, what do succubi do? They, they have sex with them and then kill them. Yeah. That, well, they drain your energy. Yeah. They eventually I mean, come on. It's kind of like a weird sex vampire soul sucking. And that's is will like get you pregnant and then kill your babies. But I, I, I mean, succubuses, I think they'll have your baby, but they kill you before it ever gets to the point of a yeah. baby. So that's what Megan Fox goes around doing. And I really like the movie too, because he, they present teenagers as they really are, which is not that interesting. You know, they're not like how they often are portrayed in films as being yeah. so extreme and so like totally out of the realm of what, um, and then the hilarious thing is that the whole thing is because this band wants to have a hit single. <laughs> like mm -hmm. they they take Megan Fox into their van and drive away. And you think this is going to be the most horrific, brutal gang rape scene I've ever seen. And they're like, they don't want to have sex with her. They couldn't care less. They just want to sacrifice her to Satan. So they can have <laughs> a hit single. It's very, very funny. It's really funny. And Amanda Seyfried is so wonderful. And so I watched that. And then I watched... These are films that I've been wanting to watch. And then I watched All the Boys of Vandy Lane, which is the opposite. It is so oh, awful. I've seen that. Everybody behaves, the men all behave like 75 year olds, you know, with their like wolves, with their tongues hanging out and slap, you know, this whole thing. And it's, it's basically the big idea is oh, what if the femme fatale was brain dead, basically? I mean, mm -hmm. Vandy Lane has nothing to say <laughs> through the whole movie. Uh huh, sure, yeah. There's like nothing going on. And that the big idea is, oh my God, she's really a femme fatale underneath and we're not gonna find out till the end. And all the men just wanna get with her and they're gonna do anything they can. And it's so offensive because say, she's still a femme fatale. She's still evil and awful. Just because she's quiet through the whole film doesn't mean that this is a new take on female sexuality. I mean, it's it was really awful and the men were all nasty. And this is high school. I don't know. It, are there? Does it really happen where a bunch of guys set up a, a camping thing and invite a woman just because they all want to hit that or get get with that? That's craziness. What teenagers do that? Like a setup for a gang rape? That doesn't exist in the real world. Ever happening in my life. <laughs> I, was also I don't know. Desirable, so I don't know. Uh, not in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> these are some of the female films I've been watching that are like the good ones dig into issues beyond obviously just the film. They, you know, I think Jennifer's body is an interesting, and again, it, it, because it's a female director and female writer, it's things that I maybe didn't know or didn't have a lot of exposure to about the inner workings of a very intense female to female friendship and how, how the, the politics or the, the mechanics of that can get screwed up. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's interesting for that. But again, I, it was like new to me because it's not something I have any experience with. So I would recommend that. And I would say Polytechnique is amazing. It's De Denis Villeneuve's reconstruction of a school shooting that happened in Montreal. Um, and it's one of his earlier films and it's, um, um, from 2009, a dramatization of the Montreal massacre of 1989, where several female engineering students were murdered by an un unstable misogynist. And um, I, I, it, I, I didn't plan all of these. It's called polytechnique. Um, in f the French word for polytechnical or polytechnic. Yeah. Um, all this female stuff is happening, you know, in these all these films. And I part of me uh, 
uh, tried to watch female centric horror films, but a lot of female stuff was coming up. And I didn't even know this was about a major misogynist. And, you know, he's an intel. The film, you know what? Somebody else go and then I'll, I'll say a couple more. This <laughs> well, is really good. I don't want to screw it up. Well, I did have two comments um, yeah. about what you said. First, I didn't think about this before, but back, like, sorry, just real quick, back to revenge. The thing that's interesting about it, when you mentioned that, hey, maybe she did that on purpose, made the rapist more interesting and more human. I just thought about this. The other two guys that are involved, including her boyfriend and the uh -huh. other friend, are almost worse because they perpe they perpetuate it. They blame her. They do not uh -huh. do anything. They're silenced. Wow. They Certainly. protect each other. Mm. And uh, I think that's really interesting. Mm. Um the second thing I wanted to mention was, uh, speaking of Jennifer's body, I mean, I love Diablo Cody. Yeah. I just saw Tully. Oh, uh, I heard it's really good. Fantastic. If you guys have not seen Young Adult Tully, like, get, please check it out. It is amazing. I oh, cannot right. stop the one with, um... So funny in Jennifer's body. She's really good. Um, doesn't it have uh, Charlize Theron? Charlize is... Wonderful. Yeah, young adult? No, no, both. Tully. She's in both. Oh, okay. Now, what, t Tully is about a French, what is it again? Tully's about a mom that is harried. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. And her brother convinces her to hire a night nurse to take the pressure off of her because she's right, in right. her mind. And the night nurse is that lady from uh, Blade Runner and uh, San Junipero. <laughs> And it, she's from the Black Mirror episode, San Junipero. Mm, okay. Um, great. It's great. I, I don't want to tell, say anything more about yeah, it, yeah. but loved it. Sorry, yeah. Monica, you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so I had two movies that I wanted to talk about. One of them I saw just because um, one of the YouTubers I watch, uh, they were talking about Actually, I heard a few YouTubers I watched talk about how it's like the scariest movie on Netflix right now, which of course Tell me. movie is. Um, but it's called Veronica. It's a 2017 yeah, Spanish film. There are two Veronicas on Netflix, I must clarify. This one is the Spanish one. Veronica Mars? No, not Veronica Mars. But uh, it's 2017, but it's, it's filmed, like, I think it's based in 1990-something. It's kind of based in older times because she always has, like, a Walkman and stuff. Um, and it's really good. It's about this little girl who, uh, well, she's not little. She's probably 16, 17, like early teens, mid teens. Um, and she has three little siblings, two twins and a little brother. And her father's dead. Just like the witch. I'm her sorry. Mom, <laughs> yeah. Her mom works, uh, the evening shift. So she, as soon as the kids get off from school, she always has to take care of them, feed them, make sure they do their homework, all that stuff. And, in the morning she always has to get the kids up so she's basically like their mom and it's this girl young girl who should be out playing but has all these responsibilities and she's dealing with that like she she still loves her mom she loves her little brother she loves her little sisters she wants to help but she also wants to like party and have fun and then they she and her friends on the solar eclipse decide let's play with a ouija board because the solar eclipse will magnify its powers and so don't she, do it she tries talking <laughs> to her dead father and then uh, shenanigans ensue and shenanigans. I, I don't I mean I don't know exactly what's on Netflix right now but I highly doubt it's the scariest movie on Netflix but <laughs> as things went like it, it definitely had stuff that scared me I was watching it in daytime I think if I was watching it in the dark, it probably would have scared me a lot more. Like it, it was a decent film. I would, I would highly recommend it. It's not gonna, it's not like the others or some great horror film, but it was a lot of fun. And like I said, there were parts that made me jump. What would you equate it with, fear-wise? <laughs> <laughs> How would you quantify this, Monica? That's so I funny. watched it during the day with the lights on. So I feel like it could have been scarier, like a paranormal activity. Not that scary? Not all the time, because paranormal activity was like constant almost. There were just a few got... scenes of not fear. 
but when Veronica brought it, it brought it. So is the film mostly about her relationship with her father? It's mostly about her relationship with her brothers and sisters. Oh, okay. Especially because she starts knowing that something's going on. Like, she, she doesn't try to deny it. She immediately goes, oh, I, I, I summoned something. Something's happening. This is obviously because of the Ouija board, and I'm not going crazy. But, um, and her little brothers and sisters, because they have such a tight relationship, just immediately go, whatever you say, we believe you. Like, okay, we trust you. Yeah, let's do okay. this. Let's put up these little hanging things that are supposed to protect us. Let's all sleep in the living room tonight because sister's going to protect us. She's hmm. the only one who can. Interesting. And this is Spain? It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's Spanish. Sa okay. In Spain, yes, Spanish. Interesting. But it's good. It's it's definitely yeah. like I again, I went into it really skeptical and I'm mad at myself for watching it during the day. I should have waited till night and turned off all the lights, but uh I was I was I was happy. I thought it was pretty good. I want to do that, but I only have a cat to sleep with. <laughs> I know. He's not gonna do anything. <laughs> He's just gonna be like, This way, ghost, she's right here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in right horror this movies, way, they're always like <sighs> I, they're no, always that's like... not true. Cats would just no. run immediately. Also, cats will just look behind you. Yeah. <laughs> I hate like that. Like an alien. Exactly. He just, she just kind of, Jonesy, just kind of mm -hmm. pretty chill about the whole thing. <laughs> I got a sweet Jonesy shirt coming in the mail. What is so, it? A what? It's a Jonesy sweet. shirt. I'll show you guys later. Oh, I want to, that sounds great. So the other movie I had, um, I think this was a recommendation from you, Crystal. I can't remember. It's a... Uh, <laughs> It's the autopsy of Jane Doe. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, it is a recommendation for me, but I still haven't seen it. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's good, and you should. Yeah, I, I saw... Me too. I want good to actors. See it so I saw the first half. It was really great. The only reason I didn't watch the second half was because of time or something. It wasn't that... It wasn't good. It was really good. No, yeah, I, I liked it. It's, it's uh, these father and son duo that work in a morgue, like a family-run morgue. And I really like it too because a lot of movies are like when it's when it's that father son family business dynamic. The son is always like, "Oh, I don't want to be here, Dad. This is so lame." And while the son has ambitions and he wants to go on and do other stuff, he really is respectful of his father and he really yeah. loves his father. And the whole reason why he gets in the situation with his father is because. Instead of going on a date, he stays at home to help his dad do another autopsy. And it's it they have a really good dynamic where it's they definitely have things that they don't like about each other, but you can tell like they are all they have left and so they both love each other. Um the dad is played by Brendan Gleason or somebody uh, like that. Oh, really? I yeah. It was someone I knew. Yeah, the dad is played by a major actor. He's really good. I, I think it's someone it. like that. I know, it's I not, have to see it. I know. Um, I did recognize him when I saw it. They're still charging uh, a lot Brian for Cox. it. Brian Cox. Oh, Brian Cox, right. Oh, okay. okay. My He's friend really Charlene good. recommended this, and she is a full-blown Chinese medium. So. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. She, what? <laughs> is, that, is that her She's daughter? like that girl from the eye. Well, wait a minute. Okay, that took a second for me to remember. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I just don't think I've seen that yet. <laughs> well, she tells me about ghosts that she can smell, so. Interesting. She's Chinese? Yes. Interesting. And she recommended uh, The Autopsy of Jane Doe? Yes. And she usually yeah, doesn't recommend horror movies to me. And she was like, no, you'll like this. Well, I don't. I mean, it definitely had some scary parts, but it's kind of one of those more just action horror films. Where it's mm. just like na almost like a natural disaster film because it's like they're caught in a storm while they're doing this autopsy. Oh. The storm keeps messing with stuff. Um, okay. But then you go, is it the storm? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell us anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've been dying to finish it. Yeah, I was good. really I intrigued like by the first half. I was Even trying the to watch. Um, the corpse of Anna Fritz or the body of Anna Fritz. But, that sounds um, familiar. 
I, I got it without subtitles, so I need to get it with subtitles, because I think that's a French film or a Russian film. That was a Dell recommendation. It's so familiar. Is that recent? Uh, let me look it up again, make sure I'm getting it right. Corpse of <clears throat> Fritz. It is, so it looks like it's 2015. Okay. Speaking of Adele recommendation, uh, they're making a woman too. Oh, yeah. A what? The woman. That was another Dell recommendation to me and Crystal. Dell recommendation? Dell. Del, she's Del, this lady. Oh, the person. Oh, okay. Oh. And what did you guys think of the woman? I haven't seen. I. It's really interesting. After uh, Dead Girl, I, I can't it. see any more women who are being tied up and, and abused or... Well, then don't watch this. Don't watch that. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of women on Gurney, well, anyway, uh, would you recommend it though? Let's yeah. say I could hack it. I mean, I think Monica and I might have enjoyed it. I think it's really, it's not for everybody. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen it too. It's exploitation, isn't it? I mean, wouldn't you would you define it as that? The woman gets tied it up and is, she has to end her. But it's it is, but it isn't. And it's a sequel to I just being very angry with the wife. <laughs> yeah, right. For allowing and, it to happen. Well, she was in an abusive situation and it's like the woman gets revenge, but I'm like, that wife needs her revenge too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she doesn't oh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh a anyway. lot of these female revenge movies, there's so many of them. There's that other one with the woman in a cage. Pet? They really, what is that called? The, the, there's, there's a movie Pet with the women in that, cages. That's what I was it. thinking of. Lord is of that any good? Have you guys seen, seen that? No, but that's another Dell recommendation I need to watch. I haven't watched it yet, though. It's got, Note um, itself. It's got Why does Dell only like women in cages? <laughs> <laughs> because nobody can cage Dell. <laughs> She's just like. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This isn't the Chinese medium we're talking about. No, no, no. This, this is, is another. This guy. is someone else, right? It's someone that Crystal and I used to work with, and uh, we discovered we're all big horror fanatics, so we all talk to each other every once. But in a what time. do you guys think about all these films about women getting revenge or taking? control of a situation where they're being victimized. I mean, it feels like it's like a tidal wave of these movies. Well, you know what's really sad is like right now, especially with everything that's been going on lately. Yeah, I was going to say the Me Too it, movement. Has Me Too movement, you know, enough. It's like all this stuff. And of course it's been happening forever, but it's still like, it's still like the ultimate escapist fantasy for, you know, for this, for getting for actually doing something about this. Mm -hmm. And women who, I don't really know if women who have been raped would watch these things, but women who haven't been raped or are scared of being raped like to see these things and go, I can get out of this. I can, you know, the guy who's trying to attack me isn't God. He can be right. stayed on. And it's not just for rape victims, but victims of harassment, victims of misogyny, victims of you know, all these different things. And like, you know, just like the Me Too movement brought out, every single woman I know has been affected by something yes. like this. Mm -hmm. Something, you know, whether or not it's, you know, rape or if it's date rape or if it's work behavior or work behavior or, you know, all these things like, you know, we all deal with the idea, like, should we say something? Should we not say something? Will it, will it hurt our jobs to say something will we be targeted will we will we be pitied or you know it, it's 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 something that i think it's it comes out because it's so comp it's such a compelling subject matter mm -hmm. because yeah. it's so difficult to do anything about it interesting you know i was thinking just in terms of carol clover wrote you know men women and chainsaws it's the best horror scholarship book all of all time but she spit she talks about gender and stuff obviously uh, but mm -hmm. she 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 specifically points out a moment in uh um uh, texas chainsaw massacre where where sally says i'll do anything you want me to i you know she's basically offering herself sexual sexually and the three of them laugh at her and carol clover points out that that's not what's being that's not what this is about. Like the men are um, playing out a much more, a much bigger 
a story about family and stuff like that. But I'm thinking, you know, Friday the 13th, Halloween. I mean, the women, you know, there's a lot, there were a lot of complaints about women being physically assaulted and killed and knifed usually. But, but the issue of actual like rape didn't enter into any of those movies because it would have, I almost want to say it would have spoiled the fantasy of those horror, of those serial killers. Um, what do you, what would you call the Friday Slasher. 13th series? Slashers. Yeah. Like if, if it would, it would turn into the accused, like the accused was not, was not a horror movie, right? It was a Tony high, high class rape revenge movie, essentially, except the revenge happened through the courts. But now, well, I mean, that's all crossover. That's all metaphorical too, because they're all yeah. using knives to penetrate women right. anyway. So right. well, it also depends on the kind of, They're all R, though. <laughs> they were all R back they then. Were, yeah. But the idea of, like, a horror film... I mean, I Spit on Your Grave was so despised in its time. Um, so it was like nobody was going to go to the exploitation horror route with rape or rape revenge. I mean, they were out there, but they were the lowest of the lowest of the low. I mean, you know, real, sl you know... Right. shoestring productions but and those were just called exploitation they weren't necessarily called horror but now it's like all these things are mixed up it seems like now uh well, i think too like we're more open and able to talk about sex whereas it was it was way easier to talk about violence mm, interesting interesting and you know we're still struggling with that as an american nation yeah you know, it's just, you would much rather see someone's head blow up than a, a nip slip, you know, and it's just insane. Than a, than a what? Like a nip slip. <laughs> oh, a nip slip? <laughs> well, but I think to deal, somebody's head exploding or somebody is is so, is like a release or it is fantasy, you know, it's, the violence is so preposterous in most of those films that you don't even really take it seriously. Bodies do things that they just like wouldn't even... Whereas with rape, revenge, or rape films, or rape horror, or women getting, um, um, you know, um, captured, or this kind of, that stuff goes on, and it's, it, I don't know, I heard, people kept saying, oh, The Room, it's not depressing, it's not um, awful, it's not Room, and, you know, what's her name, and her boy, or kept by a... Oh, yeah, uh... Brie Larson. Brie Larson yeah. and people, you know, I kept hearing all this stuff. Oh, you should watch it. It's very upbeat and hopeful. And it's not like that. It was a total miserable, it's hateful journey through hell. <laughs> what are you people talking I was about? Talking to, or not, I wasn't talking. I was listening to Brie Larson talk about that movie and how it actually affected her. It was it's so a miserable. Huge bummer. Oh my God. It was awful from beginning to end. I hated that movie and I didn't learn anything. But the point is, is that like these things happen and like, where does it, is it exploitation? Is it horror? Is it a serious drama? I don't know how to define if it matters, but I, I don't know. I would, I guess on, it, it, I, I would a lot of the time rather see people's heads explode because it, it, it is more escapist, you know, it is yeah. more metaphorical. Like you were saying, uh, uh, crystal that metaphors in some, I think are easier to deal with. And they're more fun. They are, but it's yeah. also like still avoiding the, the real yeah. subject at hand. Absolutely. I agree completely. And maybe people are sick of it. And that's why a lot more are coming up, especially, you know, and L, you know, Verhoeven made that just like two years ago. And that's a kind of a variation on the rape revenge story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would love, you should see that for sure. Oh, no, I'm I definitely. Oh, wait, we talked about it in our Rape Revenge episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, that's one that I missed on my list. But you didn't say a lot about it, Crystal, because you didn't want to give anything away. I don't want to give anything <laughs> away. I think what, well, what, I, what I was mentioning about it that was really interesting that a lot of people like do not like is how she handles the situation. Yeah, I've heard. And I'm, I think it's really interesting the way she handled it. And I think it's unapologetic about it. And it's not for us to judge how that's handled. Yeah. Um, much like the ending of Old Boy. But anyway, 
much I like the end. Because I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, he makes a choice, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. not the choice you. Choice. It's not a Hollywood choice, but it's a choice. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of, what about The Handmaiden? Oh my god. Oh my so god. Sick. I love that movie god. so much. I didn't mean to throw that into the mix, but speaking of women and revenge and all that, that's another one, you know? Monica, you have not seen it? Yeah, no, I, I've seen it. Oh, okay. Okay, am I... What do you guys think about the sex scenes? They were out of control. They, they were, were hilarious. Like, <laughs> they were hilarious. Okay, good. I'm glad to know that, like, they're meant to be, like, unbelievably outrageous. Okay. Yes. I would Absolutely. think that lesbians would not be happy about it, but I never heard anybody complain about it. I don't, maybe nobody saw it. I don't think that, I think maybe they're just pleased to have one that, one finally one sex scene that's fun. You know, because I feel like a lot of lesbian sex scenes are either for the male gaze only, mm -hmm. or like this, this like, I don't know, this Oscar bait. <laughs> situation oh, you know what that's I mean interesting. Interesting. and in, in this case it's actually and uh, the thing I love about South Korean movies too is just how the the mood is like <laughs> wildly changing yeah, from scene to right. scene it's, and mostly that movie's pretty funny there's a lot of humor in it but it, it's, <laughs> it's I don't know he's Park Chan Wook is insane have you guys seen Thirst his vampire thing absolutely it's similarly crazy like bipolar his movies i loved this i love that movie so much and i thought and i'd seen it twice and then i, I my sister and her uh her fiance were visiting and i'm like you guys have to see this movie it's really good and then i sat with my family oh my god you met her fiance or you met him no 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 okay. we we've seen each other for a, lot, a while so i forgot how explicit it was because i remember the like oh the bigger yeah, feelings it's such a romantic movie too. It's really cute and fun and um Oh, I don't know that I call it cute or fun. It's pretty extreme. What was, what was it's a sweeping movie? romance at one point what where you feel you and I used to love um where she was like a prostitute. Oh no, she was a spy. And she was spying on a general in the Japanese army. Lust caution. Yes. I oh, I still haven't how seen that. Graphic that was, and I showed it to a bunch of people, and I'm like, oh yeah, there's a lot of sex in this movie. <laughs> uh huh. It was banned in China. <laughs> so, like, just real quick, I'll wrap this. Up. Sorry, sorry. Oh no, no worries. Uh, I totally threw us off course. I didn't. I totally forgot about it because I'm thinking about like, oh, I love the the twists. I love the. Um, grift films i love the romance between these two women and i also like totally forgot about that explicit stuff and we we're like sitting there i'm like whoa <laughs> <laughs> but then even by like even though they were shocked but by the end they were like you know what that was really good oh cool that's good that's and it's not like they're, they're not prudes at all but it's it's uh, just clearly. like it's just like you know i made a i made quite a decision for the family movie time I would never show that to my mom. I mean, she might be into it, but I wouldn't want to sit and watch it with her. Uh, my um, mom shows Knock Knock, and we watched it. What's Knock? Oh, is that the one with Keanu Reeves? I haven't watched that yet. Oh, talk about another female exploitation. It, now, the women get re the They're psychopaths. I mean, what do you feel about w movies where the women are in control but they're in control because they're psychopathic <laughs> like i don't know what to say about films like that well the thing is about this one even though it's real crazy and real explicit um and pretty ridiculous it like the the what i was left with was eli roth has some really interesting things to say about uh is that eli roth? disgusting males men are <laughs> Oh, okay. Which is really interesting, because uh, when you, it's a very stinging uh, last note uh, for yeah. men, for heter hetero men, and it's like, hey, like it, when it got to the end, I was like, you know what, that was interesting, Eli Roth. Like, thank you. Mm, interesting. Um, I heard the original's more disturbing because it's better acted. You know, it's got a better cast and everything. Mm. Um, but I can't remember. Who they are, what it's called, it's even called something different. I don't know. It feels to me like 
all the majority of the horror films I've seen in the last six months, nine months, ten year have all dealt with female, either female subjectivity, relationships between women, relationships between women and men, but from the female perspective, women like working out issues of identity and sexuality, like it comes up. It's like the, th I don't know, for me, um, see, either, even when I'm not seeking it out, it seems to come as a like, I don't know, all an all female horror film. It, that seems like no big deal now, but was there such a thing? 30 well, years ago, 25 years ago? I well, don't there's think Picnic so. at Hanging Rock. <laughs> Picnic at Hanging Rock, although that's not really horror. And I love The House in Sorority Row. I think I mean, that's there's, fantastic. There's always been female-centered horror, but not. I don't know about all female horror. What oh, about well, Black Sunday? Black, Black uh, Christmas, right? Yeah, Black Christmas would be Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's also, you know, it's been 100 years of... of exploring uh, male perspectives yeah. so maybe it's just yeah and I think again because of the things that have been going on lately it's been exploding more and more because not even like to be cynical studios going like oh we're feminists let's give the women their movies but women are feeling more comfortable saying their story like it's submitting these more risque stories that they wouldn't usually put forth or directing these movies they wouldn't usually direct because they felt like there wasn't an audience but here lately we've been proving no there is an audience well i mean uh, the women have been more willing to uh, come out so to speak as horror fans i think that that was not a thing remember we were talking about that crystal and mm -hmm. about the carol clover book and the assumption was always that these films were watched by a majority of teenage boys and oh my god seeing these women get stabbed they're all going to turn into you know rapists and horrible and you said you know, they're not monsters they're actually like there are women in the audience but and the men carol clover's thing is that the men are feminized by being attacked kind of by the movie the movie feminizes the audience but yeah. besides all that it turns out all this time there were a ton of female horror fans and now they're writing about it and doing podcasts etc cetera, etc cetera. but um uh um well i guess geek culture now women are taking their place in all this fan yeah. culture stuff you know it's a big i'm telling you it's a big change from when i was you know when I was a kid and there was fan culture, there was geek culture, but women were not welcomed mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. and the movies were women not. Are just now, like, I don't even know if they are still being accepted in geek culture, but they're slowly. They in are. Place in there. It's they like are now. The more foothold women get in geek culture, the more pushback there gets, and then they'll get a foothold and then a pushback and then a foothold and then a pushback. <sighs> Oh, that's well, that's true Same in the any, like, like any topic like that, like racism or religion or. I mean, I like guess, that. but you're also a little bit closer, uh, because you know you game a lot. Mm -hmm. mm. And that and world I don't is experience notorious, that. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it can be notoriously misogynistic. We've talked about that. You know? Yeah, I uh, yeah, I, I play a lot of Overwatch, and I get a lot of insults, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's weird. But it doesn't really happen in like horror culture. Well, horror like, culture there's a... is mostly girls, like Crystal was saying. It's, it's isn't that weird? A female audience. When oh, yeah. Said, oh, most different. Of I know, like almost every girl I know is a horror fan. And then that's look at a few this. guys that I know. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> what is I'm part of the Murderino fan oh, cult. Goodness, What's Murderino? My favorite, murder My favorite Murder is a podcast, and, like, you would not oh. believe it's two women writers. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, like, a huge success, and women that I haven't even met, I'm, like, sitting next to some strange woman on a plane, and she's like, are you listening to My Favorite Murder? <laughs> you know? And, like, like, just whoever, like, your HR lady listens to this, you know? Like... Yeah. <laughs> So wait a minute, this is a podcast about real murders that took place? Yeah. Yeah, it's about true crime. And it's got two oh. comedians, and they just talk about it, and they're so funny. Yeah. Great chemistry, but it's a huge thing. Like, wow. they have world tours now, and um, it's a big community. Well, maybe Me Too was inevitable, you know, um, that women have more and more presence. I mean, you can only 
pull that stuff for so long but before the lid is blown off. And once the lid is blown off, it's gone. You can't un me too, or you can't un you can't put yeah. the lid back on that stuff. Once it's out, it's out and it's yeah. in the, you know, and it's being discussed. Well, I just going to say two, did you have another crystal? How many films did you do? Just one? I just did one. Um, I'll just quickly say I watched all three purge films in one day <laughs> because I just really had to get it. I don't know why I had missed it. Uh, I, I really, uh, I really enjoyed them. And I was mentioning that what's really interesting about it is that the perspective of the first film, your perspective as, as, uh, as the audience changes as you move through the films, because it's all about class. And it's about mm -hmm. class structure, racism. Mm. Um, I had somebody tell me that I need to watch them specifically for that because I'm really big on uh, classism. It is yep. super cool the way they handle this. Interesting. And also the uh, also Juliet from Lost yeah. is in the third movie, and I love her. <laughs> the third one, yeah. Yeah, um, so watch them all just to see her in the third one. <laughs> Do you recommend watching them in a row like that, Crystal? Absolutely. Oh, okay. Interesting. Very because interesting. It leads into, you know, it's it's uh, chronological at that point, and there is a new one coming out called the the first purge. I think it's coming out soon this year. They always uh, have to do the pre-story once they finish the. the, the yeah, they don't need the, to, but sure. They interesting. Can do that. Well, but like, you, your, um, sorry, this is. Noel's thing. He talked about seeing Annabelle cre Creation. I just recently watched all of the Conjuring movies. Um, oh. And all the Insidious movies. On your second watch, how do you feel about the Conjuring movies? I still like Conjuring 1 and 2. I do not like the Annabelle movies. I see what you're saying about Annabelle Creation and I do appreciate certain aspects of it, especially more than Annabelle. I hated Annabelle. Absolutely hated Annabelle. Um... Annabelle creation I did like more, but uh, I love, I still love the Conjuring movies. I mean, I wasn't seeking it out. It was just like an art. Somebody said, let's go. And he was really disappointed. I was like, what were you expecting? <laughs> you didn't I thought this would be the this best. Be I was surprised, though, um, how much I like the Insidious movies. Because I, I watched the first one and I was like, meh, okay. So I, like I never that. watched the other two. Oh, they're pretty good. I, yeah, I, I mean, they weren't great, but I was just like, oh, snap. These are actually pretty decent movies. They're decent. Um, I would put Conjuring above above yeah, them a little yeah, bit. I think it's better. But they were, like, I think Conjuring is one of those movies where it's, it's actually a good film, so it's a little bit higher. Mm. Whereas Insidious, they're not that great, but they are really enjoyable. Like, just but they're not, watch, like, they're fun. They're not high production values or anything. They're not like they, they will pretty. Always have look my heart because they have something that me and Crystal refer to as spookies. They're everywhere. <laughs> I love that. They do have spookies. They have spookies everywhere. Where it's Darth like Maul. those little scenes where like somebody turns off a TV and you see a dark shadow in the back of the TV. Like the you look in the reflection of the knife and there's yeah, someone there. There's, there's like a ghost there, or someone's talking on the phone and they walk past the hall and all of a sudden there's someone in the hallway watching them. Like those are what me and Crystal call spookies. Mm. And I should probably watch it again. Is littered with spookies. Oh, because everywhere. everything. Everything, especially in the first one too, when you watch that one scene where I think they're just outside the house and you can see all these spookies at once. Now, are these that things that you everybody sees, or you have to really look and you see more and more as you watch them? For or? the most part, I think people probably see seventy-five percent of them, but then a second watch, you see all of them. Yeah. I just remember the the woman, you know, the the same old scene of the the the. The psychic comes in to solve the problem, and I remember in in Insidious, mm -hmm. she just walks in and lists all the things. Like there's no anything. It's just like, okay, this is what's happening, and this and this person died, and blah blah blah. And then you need to do this and this. And I was like, that is so uninspired. There was no. But like, it didn't solve the problem. I know, but still, it was like they but didn't I even think, try. Wasn't it, wasn't it because she'd already been with that family before? She already knew what the ghost was because they'd haunted them like, before. Well, if you watch I wrote. one and two and three, she's a prominent figure. 
Oh my goodness. I, I fell in love with the series because that one point where she, like, she's in, like, the ghost world and she, like, totally throws a ghost up against the wall and has the come at me bitch scene. And I was just like, these are the greatest movies ever. Because <laughs> this old woman <laughs> just went come at she me bitch. She said come at me bitch to the, to the ghost? She did, and it was so good. <laughs> now I want to watch that. I just want to watch it for that scene. <laughs> it was so great. Like, after that, I was gone. I was like, this movie. Oh, my God. <laughs> I recently had the uh, pleasure of watching Seven with somebody who had never seen it. Oh, that's a, what's in the box? That's a rough one. <laughs> they yeah, totally I guessed the end and- I only watched that recently. I don't know how I feel about it. I know it was important in the history of serial killer films, but I did watch Zodiac again. Mm, Zodiac is very good. Because the first time I watched it, I couldn't follow it. It was too fast and this time I, followed it and somebody mentioned i was i was listening to a critic who was saying or conversation they said you know i what's that director's name again david fincher david David fincher's not a director who's really interested or has much or cares much for human beings and i thought maybe that's true he doesn't like people very much he loves Nihilism. I mean, think about yeah, fight. Yeah. Every lesson in every movie he's ever done: Alien Three, Fight Club. <laughs> yeah, it's like people are not really so people great. Are the worst. <laughs> people are the worst, and that's why. Like, I had this debate too. Like, do you like? I, for me, they were asking, like, do you like Seven better? Do you like Silence of the Lambs? Well, I think Silence of the Lambs is better. Uh, Seven is amazing, but you don't have a good taste in your mouth when you're done. Mm-hmm. I just there's not much plot. Why does he shoot? Oh, listen, we're going off to way other things that aren't going to make sense to anybody who hasn't seen the movies. But why does the killer, what's his name? Kevin uh, Spacey. Actor, oh, I can't stand I've never I'm been scared. able to stand Kevin him. Kevin Spacey's the killer. <laughs> it's just him. Yeah, well, he may as well be. Yeah. Kevin Spacey, why does he shoot? Why does he shoot at them? Because he wants to start the chase? I think he's he's deliberately trying to start a chase because it makes the thing sense. is he didn't even know he didn't even know they were coming so I don't know why he was just like oh I'm gonna shoot him when he had the perfect cover before by taking yeah. pictures and pretending to be the paparazzi yeah, he could have just been that was, guy they didn't see him what what the hell is that about unless you see it the whole thing is like Kevin Spacey's character wants to be killed and he does what he can to get make that happen. That's what I thought his ultimate goal was. It that he was, only... but then he didn't even, they didn't even need to find his place then. There were, there were, there's like no point in that scene then. Yeah, I just mean like when he takes the opportunity, it just, it's the only way to make sense of the end of that rather than just being nasty and stupid. It's like he, he wanted to create a situation where um, Brad, what's his name? Brad Pitt? Mm-hmm. Brad Pitt would shoot him so that he wouldn't, there, um, I don't know. Well, it's I, been I wasn't, way too long. I have not seen yeah. the movie recently. I, I, I only saw it recently, so it's it's fresh. Did you Have you guys seen The Black Coat's Daughter? This was another one of my female-centric horror choices. This is weird, and you guys will like it. And it's, um, oh, God, it's really hard to describe. And uh, this is the description on IMDb. Two girls must battle a mysterious evil force when they get left behind at their boarding school over winter break, which is totally wrong because there's a whole second story of a girl who's hitchhiking and trying to get to that school. And it's from 2015, The Black Coat's Daughter. And it's really interesting. And one of the big things about it is uh, is the revelation that Emma Roberts is really, really good. She has to play a really yeah. troubled young woman and she hardly gets any language at all. She has like almost nothing to say, but she's in the whole movie and it's like a lot of just close-ups of her face. And I've always thought she was good, but I don't think that the way she's cast uh, in those television she's shows- cast theaters, is vapid oh, always. I love her. And she's yeah, not- she's in, um, Scream Queens is not her. doing her any favors. Queen, in she's, career. In something else. she's in American Horror. She is an American Horror Story, but this film, she, she is amazing. She hardly says anything, and she, you can, there's so much going on, and she knows, she knows what she's doing. She's a good actress, and she just needs better material. But the Black Coat's daughter is three women, and again, it's very much about, in some ways, it's about female relationships and 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 friendships, and how women 
and also different ways that women respond to it's really interesting i can't fully say i understand exactly what happened it's very slow not much happens um but it's uh emma roberts and then i think you guys might know another one of the actresses um shit um uh kiernan shipka and then lucy boynton and they're all really good all three women are really really good and yeah, I would recommend it. I'd want to hear what you guys think about the Black Coat's Daughter. And it was underrated and it wasn't given enough attention last year. And it's fascinating. But again, this is one, Monica, where I need you need to explain what, like, is it based on, is there some big metaphor or some, like, underlying story structure that uh, I'm not getting? Yeah, I'll, I'll, but, like, I'll check it out. <laughs> this is definitely also in the top three, in the category of, like, the top 10 of scariest phone calls like black black christmas is the number one the most horrifying terrifying scary gut-wrenching nightmare fuel phone calls i mean there's just that's what that movie is for me this one has is also up on the list not as high but it's on the list so um very interesting and um have you guys seen hashtag horror yes yes i have <laughs> Oh my God! I seen, want to talk I've so much about it. But I've taken too. Unfriended and friend requests, I think, are the other two. Those horror films. Hashtag horror. Okay, Crystal, think about this as like it's like an American simplified version of How's It. It is. Check it out. I, so that's terrible. A real like three <laughs> so on all three of those movies: hashtag horror, unfriended, and I think the other one is friend request. I expected the worst movies ever out of them. And then when they weren't just horrible, I was like, oh, okay. But I mean, hashtag horror is an art film of some kind, like an art film made by somebody who doesn't, that's a whole nother conversation. And I'll, I, I want you guys, but Polytechnique uh, is the film about the student shooting. And I didn't know it was gonna be about gender, but it turns out that that guy uh, had a big issue with women, and it, he was one of these, um, whatchamacallits you were talking about before. In cells. In cells, in it, what is it? In cells. Involuntary celibates. Involuntary <laughs> celibate. Unfortunately, okay, he responds to it through day. with violence. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> but it's so good, it's black and white. He figured out, um, Villeneuve figured out how to do a student shooting or school shooting film and not make it sensational and not make it fun or not make you love like be really there's nothing sleazy about it like he tried to he did everything he could to make it not an exploitation film and an intelligent film and it is so what he manages to the the richness of the story and the characters that he's able to get out of really what is just like the base the basics of uh, the facts of what happened, you know, and he does it in black and white, but he manages to get, you get, again, he's giving the viewer the benefit of the doubt to fill in a lot of the stuff of like who these people are and what's going on and how the shooting, and it jumps back and forth in time. Check out Polytechnique. I'm dying to hear what you guys have to say. And I didn't know it was going to be a feminist film, but because the killer is misog, he's saying misogyny is a part of it it can't help but deal with how man, men reacted, like the male reaction, the female, the female experience, the male experience of the students who were there when this all took, when this all went down. So again, not intending, and would you guys call that a horror film? I guess it would be a thriller. I mean, I, think I can qualify as horror. I yeah, think so too. Yeah, like I still put Black Swan and Horror world. It's right. Thrillers tend to be more like, I don't know, like mental I, horror. I saw The Devil as a thriller. Yeah. yeah. Thriller. Oh, anyway. The Devil is a thriller? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like a lot. Definitely be horror. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, that's just, yeah. Well, anyway, me... so. Oh. I, I want to talk about hashtag horror, but I'm not going to do it now because I've already taken up too much space. But the reason I wanted to mention all these films is I all saw them in a short amount of time and I just was really struck. Oh, I've been, yeah, I've been binging a lot of stuff lately. 
And um, I just will mimic, I will um, second uh, Monica's um, uh, tra tra championing of Dark Song. It is oh, yeah. a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece. It's so good, right? It is amazing. Uh, um, so that Dark Song, I recommend, I'd love to hear what you have to say about it, um, Crystal, because I've never seen anything quite like it. it completely took me by surprise it is really really especially like when i went into it i didn't know anything about it i just saw it on netflix and i'm like okay click it looks fun and then i was just like what am i watching well i didn't know either because you didn't really give much away in our discussion mm -hmm. into your to, discussion it's, so, it's, it's so really really I serious tell you anything. okay i mean the end is sort of wtf but <laughs> i but i still thought it was I don't know, man. It was very moving and very ex well executed and crafted. And those two performances are incredible. It's basically this woman wants to reconnect with her children or bring them back, Monica. And now I can't even remember this setup. Uh, no, she wants revenge. Oh, on the people who killed her children. Oh, my God. Another revenge movie. Yeah. But this goes in places that you would never yeah. imagine it would go. It's, it's really good. Okay. Um, and another sleazebag guy who, well, they're both very, it's two people in a house, really simple. And what they managed to wrest out of that situation is I, like nothing I've ever seen yeah, or it no, goes places. That, yeah. Anyway, I, I'm babbling now, okay. but um, I have seen a lot. And we haven't spoken in a while. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Tell me, explain to me female experience. Go. <laughs> uh, you know what it's like to be punched in the gut? <laughs> what? No, I'm joking. Uh, hmm. That's going to take a lot longer than... I, I'm kidding. It's like, should I, even be, should I be trying to figure out what the female experience is, whatever that is, through horror movies? I don't know if that's the best way, but it seems to be better than others. It's better... Well, yeah, it's, it's good for the dark moments. Yeah. But, I mean, so. there's also the fun times. <laughs> Some of these movies have <laughs> girls having fun together. Hashtag horror has 14-year-old girls improvising. I don't know if I would call them having fun. because They are I improvising. Think only, I think only two people in that group were having fun, and the other ones were just there because they wanted to be popular. Wait a minute. There are, there are no characters. There's no story, Monica. Please do not even give the, <laughs> give the creator the benefit of the doubt. She got five, six 14-year-old girls and said, here's some makeup. Here's some dresses. Yeah. Go. It's all improvised. You do oh, know really? that. It's all improvised? I mean, it couldn't. Nobody could write this absurd. You know, it's what 13-year-old girls say to each other. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, There's no narrative. Pretty mean. <laughs> One of them is, but then they change their mind. And, yeah. Like, they go from subject to subject in the most <laughs> illogical way. And it's like, oh, that's what 14-year-old girls are like. Yes, I remember this. <laughs> I mean, that's being like around <laughs> me when I was a fourteen-year-old girl. Um, oh my! I mean, yes, Monica. There's some sense of narrative, but the more I think about it, the more I can see. Tara, the director isn't capable of. There was no. Oh God, I'm sorry. He could have. Said, I had so much I wanted to say about hashtag. You guys just fill time. time. What? Monica, what we need to do is you and I need to come up with a list of ten films or less that represent. The female experience from our point of view the most totally how fun would that be it would be great well, not all horror films just any film it could be any film Can I what should i watch the, bio, the whole series virgin suicides i've seen okay i've seen that i got i have a you like her films do you like uh sofia coppola's films i do because i know that that's her thing right no, it's I've like i've never seen any of her movies really you seen any of her movies You've seen, you haven't seen Marie Antoinette? You've seen Lost in Translation. I haven't seen, nope, neither of those. Bling Ring? What? The Beguiled? You haven't seen The Beguiled yet? Because that is incredible. I don't oh, think is it good? Seen. It's oh, worth yeah. seeing? Oh, okay. yeah. It's free on Prime right now. Oh, okay. That's good to know. I'll definitely watch it. I think both versions are free on Prime right now. We're talking about just her directing stuff, right? Yes. Well, yeah, that's pretty much, I mean, she was an actress once, I think. Yeah. <laughs> 
I have seen nothing she's directed. You've never I've seen a sitcom. Okay, no. we need to get. We need to log off this, and then we need to. Talk. <laughs> Lost in Translation was the thing that like broke through. It was like a big deal. And that's what broke um, the actress, right? To a yeah. much bigger story. Yeah, Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, I've seen, With I've seen Murray. like a total breakdown of Lost in Translation um, by that, that guy, Movie Buff, that I liked. Um, oh, you haven't watched about... the movie. Yeah, but I didn't see the movie. I saw what he but... wrote about it. Oh, my God, lady. Okay, so, yeah, let, let's wrap it. Okay. All right. Wrap it. All right. Well, uh, um, yeah. So I this I was... was another. So, what, what we've been watching, we've listed so many that I I'm not going to recap yes. them because they don't. Really I'm going to I'm going to leave you all with one thought. Okay. Yes. W right now we live in a world where Casey Affleck has won an Oscar and Angela Bassett has not. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, that is so depressing. Is that, is that wait, but Casey is the. That's the female experience right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait. What did he win for? Uh, Manchester that? by the Sea. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that. You didn't like that? Did you see it? Compared to the body of work of Angela Bassett? Oh, yeah. It doesn't quite compare. Yeah, no, that's true. Didn't she get right. a nomination for playing uh, Tina Turner? She probably got a she's nomination, but she's never won anything. A few times, but... Did you? I oh, like yeah. I would to think she's been nominated. Well, at least Ben did it. Really. Did ben, has Ben won one for being an actor? He's terrible. He's one director. Anyway, right. yeah, you're right. That's that's that is the one thought we should leave everybody with. Okay, well, <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, uh, this has been another episode of what we've been watching. As you can tell, we watch a lot. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Tell us if you like these movies. If you think we're crazy. If you think Casey Affleck totally deserved that nom <laughs> that award, <laughs> let us know. Uh, all right, well. Thanks. Oh, are there any horror movies with Angela Bassett? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Wait, Let's yes, talk. Yes, yes. Uh, Just give me one. American Horror we... Story. Oh, right. She's on American Horror Story. Yeah. But okay. There's... She was in something else, wasn't she? Well, just make sure everybody sure. knows where What Doesn't Kill Us, right? Yes. <sighs> and we talk about also, horror movies, despite what you've heard tonight. <laughs> Also, when Stella got her groove back was like 20 years ago, and she still looks amazing. She's That's all yeah. I gotta say. I just I feel like she's one of the vampires. Her and um, is it Anderson Cooper? They're both vampires. <laughs> they don't age. She sold her soul to Papa Lewa. We know this. Papa Lewa. Yeah. Oh, that's from American Horror Story, right? <laughs> I yeah. felt like I I'm tr she's been in so many movies. It's hard for me to find. I feel like I've seen her in a horror film, but whatever. I'm All sorry, right. I didn't mean That's to. Good. Okay, stop. goodbye. <laughs> Bye.